Everything I say is alleged, my opinion, and for entertainment purposes only. Hey everybody, let's get into this review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6, Episode 27, Peace Before the Storm. Ah, okay, let me start. It's stormy. Kimmy and Maurice are at their new office location. Um, Did they ever tell us the details on why they have a new office building? Did they give up their old offices and why? Oh, uh, never mind, because according to Maurice... We need to separate reality TV from reality. So we won't get the answer on that one, okay? So Kimmy complains about Maurice not doing shite in the business or in the household. Basically, Kimmy wants Maurice to be proactive versus her having to ask him 10 times to get things done. They talk about Kimmy and Letitia getting that vaginal steam. It's Kimmy saying we put things in us we are not supposed to. Now, would that include Maurice Dirty? Kimmy let Maurice know that Letitia took a pregnancy test. And Maurice was like the rest of the world and thinks it's crazy that she would do that with her husband having a vasectomy. Maurice basically said that Marceau will not be happy with it. And Letitia knows that. He said Letitia's taking on all these hats and projects and having issues with her family she needs to go to africa by herself child they was throwing shade okay at marcel going to africa by himself you know to get himself together child so we have stormy meet up with letitia in her old dusty place uh with some sheet rock going up finally as letitia was saying stormy wants to try to help letitia and kiki mend their relationship why so stormy asks letitia how she doing Letitia says she's fine, you know, of course, with that stupid laugh she has, okay, that tells you she's lying on embellishing is a better word. Letitia said the barbecue thing nailed the coffin, or is it put the nail in the coffin, but anyway. Letitia tries to give an example of Stormy and her friend, and Stormy having to pull away from her friend because she's using. Stormy said that that's a different situation. Because Kiki is in recovery and Letitia's still trying to put Kiki on drugs. She was like, yes, she is using. Now, I haven't seen her put a pill in her mouth, but it's her behavior that reminds me of how she used to be. Girl, Stormy said um, Letitia should not use it when it's not true. And Letitia should not assume. If I was Kiki, I would sue her for defamation. Point blank into the period. Bring all my positive tests I would sue Letitia. Line up. Get in line and sue her. Anyway. Letitia, be careful about what you put out there, okay? Read what you saw, okay? Letitia lets us know that she went to Vegas with her girls and Marcel went to Columbia with his business partner of Black because he was getting married. This on their anniversary weekend. They spent it separate. Finally, an admission that you all don't own Black solely because you would have thought you and Marcel owned that place by yourselves the way y'all be acting. But we know it's a whole fugazi thing going on. Stormy said, why would they go to Columbia? That's the brothel place it's full of prostitutes. Letitia said, it is. Because she ain't even know. Okay. Letitia cleans it up by saying her and Marceau are adults. And they know how to behave themselves. And Stormy needs to get out of the warehouse and have some fun. But why are you throwing shade at Stormy when she was just trying to inform you that Columbia was a brothel click child? It's always a deflection for me when somebody talking about Marceau possibly cheating. Okay, now she turning it on Stormy. Wow, Letitia, you wonder why people don't like you, okay? They talk about Marceau and Courtney, and Courtney is not to be played with. They decide to do a double date. Again, why? All right, reality TV. Stormy asks about the kids. Letitia said the business is doing well. Stormy said that whole website thing was an issue. Letitia proceeds to now blame her assistant as well as the web designer. Child, this girl don't take no responsibility or hold herself accountable for nothing. And she telling lies, okay? Stormy said, are you going to apologize to me? Letitia feels like, for what? Stormy said, I got a lot of backlash from you and your team's mistake. It was Tisha's mistake, not the team. It was Tisha. Anyway, Stormy said it was a bad look for you, Letitia. And Letitia was like, no, it wasn't a bad look for me. She goes into defense mode. Stormy tried to explain to her that the website thing overshadowed her daughter's business. And Letitia was like, oh, they got a lot of business off of that. And Stormy feels like, you know, she's giving Letitia a lot of grace in this moment. And she was, because Letitia just was not getting it. It took Stormy to say it was a bad look because the same amount of hate you got, I did too. And Letitia finally gets it and apologize. But now I'm thinking, like, did she do that on purpose to get traction to come to her website? Like, I'm confused. 
The fact that Letitia didn't get the point from the beginning shows she's selfish because Stormy had nothing to do with your daughter's business. But because of your mistake, she got backlash too. It's sad this lady just can't comprehend. It's always someone doing something to her. Just sad. Side note, can we talk about Stormy being an advocate for bringing people back together? So what's up with you and Mel? Anyway, Chris meets with Nell about Chris Jr. Mm -hmm. and his concerns about what Chris Jr. is going through. And he wants Nell to understand the seriousness of it. Nell thinks Chris Jr. is an a-hole. Don't answer his phone and don't call his mother. Nell also brings up the fact that, you know, he hasn't been the same, you know, since all those football offers. And I guess it didn't go nowhere. And he does not like the way his life has gone and he don't want to hear the truth chris lets nell know that he never saw chris jr like he saw him in his office and maybe facing some kind of depression nell said she is concerned and said she won't stress the money um which she did only to hold him accountable if that's the reason he's not coming around she won't hold that over his head she said if he agrees to go to counseling she's going to support him and Chris Sr. Nell admits that giving him souped up cars and stuff like that did not help him at all either. I hope they do go to counseling. Um so we so they could work it out. And maybe Chris Jr. could get his life on track. Kimmy invites Mel and Letitia out to get pedicures to continue working on their relationship since they are trying to move on. Letitia shows up first and they talk about the steam again and they working for Letitia. Ugh, Letitia said, Oh, we've been having fun, child. Throw up and not Kimmy. Kimmy asked her if she told Marceau about the pregnancy test. Letitia said no, but she keeps getting sick. The teacher thinks Marcel is not going to care. Well, even if he don't care, he's going to gaslight the hell out this whole situation and make you look stupid as he usually do. Okay. I don't even got to see the next episode to know that. Okay. Mel arrives and Kimmy said, you've been busy and let Mel know she saw the name change party, but she did not get an invite and said, because it was on the internet, she's bringing it up. The teacher chimes in and says, Kimmy is surprised because she didn't make the list. Even though Mel threw her a breast cancer party, that makes you close friends. Tisha, shut the hell up. You wouldn't even know what a friend did if they invited you to the Friendship Hall of Fame and explained it to you thoroughly. What a friend is. Kimmy, I'm going to need you to stop talking about Mel made it clear who her friends are. Because at the last reunion, you made it clear too that you are not besties and y'all don't hang out. And I didn't like how he tried to downplay me and Kimmy having a relationship off camera. I didn't appreciate that because we do. Me and Kimmy never really had no real problems. So we've yeah, always no, done not that. At all. So we've always done that. And so I didn't appreciate trying to make it seem like, yeah, well, they're not they're not friends. I, I mean, that was none of his business. It's not it's anyway. not a, a division. What I call things at, at the end of the day, they're not they're not close friends like that. Can I interject first? Let me say something. I think that that particular interview Social media kind of made it more. Melody has done interviews where she says, we not her like hangout friends. She said the same thing. The words are the same. I just think the way it came out made it a little more distasteful. And the comparisons, like, I mean, because me and Martel, we check on each other, we talk on the phone. And it's yeah, like, and, and, and that's just an honest statement. She's done plenty of interviews. We We're not at the movies and getting right. massages every weekend. We're not. Like, right. that's, that's not enough. Do you consider Melody a friend? Kimmy? So yeah. why the comment is baffling to you it blows my mind, okay? Mel's whole point is that she didn't want it to become a thing because they are still close with her ex and it would have become a negative thing and she didn't want that around her naming ceremony. And Mel is absolutely right because y'all would have talked about to it to her ex. Mel says she feels the, you know, the name change and ceremony gave her a sense of moving on. Then Kimmy goes into making her maiden name her middle name because she didn't want her child to have a different name from her and how in african-american communities they assume our children have different last names no they don't i've never seen nobody with an issue like that child that was all in your head it's tragic and it's tragic like that whole conversation was stupid okay so we found out that Kimmy, you know, posted something and said that it was creative editing that made it look like it was a dig, but it wasn't a dig. And it wasn't towards single mothers. It was just a conversation of them talking about, you know, changing your last name from 
you know, your married last name back to your maiden last name, your kids still having, you know, the marriage name, whatever. Like, I'm an example. Like, when I got divorced, I took my dog on maiden name back. I was not about to keep that man's last name. Okay, my kids still have his last name, but I was not about to keep his last name, especially if I'm not with him anymore. Mel said it doesn't matter to her at all, and her kids know all about it. And it should not, okay? Mel said she didn't invite Letitia and Kimmy because they have not been getting along, and that the line that shows you're for me is not clear with them. So that's why she chose not to invite them. The conversation turned to Letitia being away towards Mel at the town hall meeting. Letitia apologizes to Mel because her energy was not directed towards her at all. She said with everything going on and we put hard work in it, she just didn't want to hear anything. But as a businesswoman, don't you want feedback of your very first event so you know what to do for your next event but anyway not coming from Letitia she don't comprehend well but Mel had to make it clear and get her point across that Letitia only said something when she spoke out because when everybody else spoke she was sitting there on mute okay the mute challenge Letitia could not handle the pressure is her excuse and her energy energy with everyone was off lies girl you just you just wanted to say something to Mel okay in that town hall meeting Kimmy brings up social media and them blocking each other Mel said they are cool and blocking and unblocking on social media don't count so Kimmy is happy with, you know, getting the misunderstanding handled. Okay, that was still a corny scene anyway. Then we got the double date with Stormy, Courtney, Letitia, and Marceau, who arrived an hour and a half late, by the way. Stormy talks to Courtney about Letitia and the website thing, and she realizes that Letitia may, may not be someone she likes. Stormy feels like Letitia was playing in her face when she had a conversation with her at that dusty location that's going to be her real estate office. Can we talk about that zebra print bodysuit Stormy was wearing? Never mind. Stormy said that Letitia Marceau think they somebody and B they ain't. Okay. She said time is money and they are wasting her time. Okay. Courtney let it be known that Marceau calling him Mr. Steel was childish and Marceau said it's the selective outrage because Stormy called him a bee about three times. And Courtney said he ain't have a problem with that. Stormy said if you had a problem and you felt the way, you should have kept it with me and not turning it towards Courtney. Marceau said he's going to ignore Stormy from now on because Stormy calls him a bee again. And them talking about the situation. Stormy said don't ignore her because it's disrespectful. That's why Letitia got a drink thrown in her face. <laughs> and Letitia started feeling away. Okay. Letitia feels away and said it's very rude and feels that Stormy has an issue with her. Marceau tried to uh strike back by telling Stormy that you said that your culture that they use the B word in your family and Stormy walks away. Letitia said you invited us to this double date. And I feel like that was edited in because Letitia was standing there smiling like a dumbass. I feel like if Stormy heard Letitia say that, she would have turned around. I don't think she would have did anything, but she would have turned around and probably said something or gave her that blank look that she always do when people are saying something she don't want to hear. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, that was the end of the episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know my next video comes out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.